All right, guys, we're going to be taking a look at the Heritage Rough Rider versus the Ruger Wrangler, going over the pros and cons of each. And with that being said, let's get started. Now I do want to start this off by saying I have a lot more time with the Heritage than I do the Ruger Wrangler. The Heritage uh, Rough Rider is mine. I've had it for a while. I've put a lot of rounds through it. So there is that. Now uh, we'll go ahead and get one thing out of the way. These guns are not identical, obviously. Um, this one, the Heritage, has a 6.5 inch barrel, I believe. Or maybe a 6 inch. I'm not sure. I think 6.5. And, and this one has the 4.5 inch barrel. So I, I, without actually measuring it, I think this one's actually just six inches yeah more like an inch and a half uh anyway guys so they're a little bit different there obviously this is a ruger this is a heritage uh, both u.s made to the best of my knowledge so i think so yeah newport new hampshire and miami florida so there we go uh price point the ruger is just a little bit more expensive i think it's coming in about 50 dollars more on average from what i've seen than the heritage the Heritage, um, a lot of times, will come as a combo set, so you have two different cylinders. Again, it is unloaded, but we'll just go ahead and show you guys how easy it is to swap cylinders. Go to Halfcock, open your loading gate, push this pin in on the side here, pull this pin out, roll your cylinder out, put your Magnum cylinder in, have a good time. Uh, I don't shoot 22 Magnum very often, so it is a feature that is largely wasted on me. I do have the Magnum cylinder. However, uh, I don't shoot 22 mag a whole lot. The takedown on the Ruger Wrangler is going to be very similar. I'm going to open your loading gate. Um, there is really no half cock on here, so that is it differs from uh, standard single action revolvers, if you will. Push a pin, pull a pin, roll a cylinder out, voila, roll a cylinder back in, and throw your pin back in there. So those you have to finagle with it. And we are good to go. So, the typical single action method of operation um, would be to pull that hammer to half cock, but this one does not stop the half cock. Uh, the way you free the cylinder up on the Ruger Wrangler, just by opening the loading gate, and then the cylinder spins freely. Close the cylinder, make sure your cylinder, or make, close the loading gate, make sure your cylinder locks up, and you are good to go. On the Ruger Wrangler for loading, unloading, disassembly, take the hammer, go to half cock. Two clicks, open your loading gate, and your cylinder spins freely. You notice it has a click each time. It makes it very easy to index uh, where you're at for unloading and, and things like that. Close your loading gate, go to full cock, and this one has a manual safety. One of the reasons I don't like this gun, and one of the reasons I do, flip the safety up and you can either pull the trigger, I still ease the hammer back down rather than just let it fall, but there you go. So, I think we're going to load both these up uh, with six rounds, and we're going to shoot, and just uh, nothing crazy formal today, as it's about to rain, and I am out of paper targets, but we'll be shooting at the steel, and uh, just see which one I get more hits with. Alright guys, I'm going to give newcomer advantage to the Ruger Wrangler, um, since it's not my gun, so it's kind of get guest rights here. We've got six loaded up, we're going to do a total of 12, so two cylinders full, I am at 20 yards, shooting at my 8 inch steel swinger. Pretty easy target. We'll just see the sights on these guns are rudimentary. So, and again, this is kind of a test for me. Um, it's more, <laughs> I wouldn't make your decision based off this part, but all right. As I miss it. There we go. One, two. Wow, I actually missed 50% of those. Yeah, it's more of a testament on me and just doing this for fun. So the last video I made on this, we had a guy get butt hurt because I explained how a single action revolver works. 
It's almost like he doesn't realize some people are just now getting into firearms with everything going on. But that's kind of sad. You get your own special mention, dude, whatever your name was. So, we can all take a moment and laugh at the gentleman that thinks helping new people is wrong. All right, do these next six here. Yep. Ah, two. Let's clip the corner, it looks like. Four. So what was that? Seven out of 12? Not great. Uh, so I'll go down there and get the Heritage. All right, guys. Heritage Rough Rider, uh, six inch barrel, and I've had it a lot longer. I'm gonna take that manual safety off. Hey, yeah, let's shoot these twelve. I think I missed one there if I was counting, right? Again, I've been shooting this gun for a few years now. Actually, until I started doing YouTube stuff where people tend to like the super tactical stuff more, this was probably the most likely candidate for me to grab can take out as far as a handgun goes just for fun then I start shooting more 9 and reloading and I forgot just how much fun 22 is my all time favorite plinker is a Ruger American Rimfire uh, that uses 1022 mags bolt action but I've done videos on that they'll be in the description if you want to check them out alright let's shoot these 6 Well, that's six, right? All right, so 11 to seven. Um, again, that does not mean that the Heritage is automatically better than the Rough Rider. That's just what I shoot best. So why don't we go back down to the table and I'll tell you what I like about them each. Um, and I'll let you guys make your own minds up. So in terms of just straight build quality, which one do I think is built better? Ruger all day long. It feels so much more solid in my hand. The Heritage has some wobble. I don't even know what it is that's wobbling. All the screws are tight. It's just a little bit more loose, a little bit more sloppy. And again, I love this gun, and this gun isn't mine. So, um, although I will tell you the truth about it. I do enjoy it. I, just, I haven't shot it as much as the Heritage. So, build quality, Ruger, hands down. Uh, aftermarket support, Heritage. Uh, it's been out longer, so there is that, at least from what I can find, and if I'm wrong, correct me in the comments. Uh, I don't have a dog in this fight. This one's going back home to Jonathan. This one's staying in my safe, so <laughs> there is that. I think there is more aftermarket support for the Heritage Rough Rider, so there is that. Now, how big of a deal that is to you, I don't know. Uh, to me, it doesn't really matter. I come out here, and as long as I can get ammo, I'm happy. Or parts if something breaks, but I haven't had any parts breakages yet. Uh, reliability. This one's not really fair because I have so much time and so many rounds through this one versus the, the Ruger Wrangler. Um, I can't really make a judgment call there. I can say that in my experience, both guns have gone bang almost every single time. This one had a couple misfires. My Heritage did, and that could have been the ammo. Um, the Ruger, since I have been playing with it and almost 500 rounds through it at this point, I've been shooting the hell out of it. Thank you, Jonathan. I'll clean it. Um, has not had a single hiccup. Shootability, this is going to be so subjective, it's not even funny. Uh, they both, they're both shootable. They both feel good in the hand. Uh, yeah, I don't, I can't really make a judgment call. So, we'll say this. If you're in the market for a single action 22 LR revolver, the Ruger is going to be put together slightly better. The Heritage is going to be a little bit easier to find from what I've seen and may save you a few dollars and if you want 22 mag capability, as far as I know, I haven't seen that out for the Ruger yet. Whereas the Heritage Rough Rider does have that. And you can get a combo with both cylinders or just order the extra cylinder, which I think is like 35 or 40 bucks. 
so it's cheaper to get the cylinder when you get the gun. Um, I don't think you're going to go wrong with either of these. I think they're a lot of fun. They are a great way to teach new shooters how to shoot because unlike a semi-auto, there's manual action required uh, between shots. So it slows them down just a little bit and it's good for a safety thing in case they get excited and you know flag everybody behind them. And it's also good from a fundamental standpoint. If they can learn to shoot with these sights, they'll be just fine later on. So guys, either one of these is going to make a great addition to your lineup, especially in these times where things like 9mm are getting harder and harder to find. Um, 22 is still on the shelf near me, so uh, might be a good idea to get out there and have some fun. If nothing else, blow off some of the stress with the corona riot election apocalypse that we've got going on right now. This great maelstrom of shit. So hopefully things get better here soon. Uh, guys, thank you for watching. Stay safe. Keep shooting. I'll see you next time.